rusty bean can. G'day again viewers, here we are back again at the sawmill site, finally back into it after about two or three weeks off, was um, pretty busy with work, doing some um, fruit harvesting, but that's finished up for the season and now I'm back into this project, the um, camp shelter, you see we've got a bit of a camp set up there with a shower and everything, already I've been staying there the last few weeks. But it definitely needs to be upgraded in preparation for summer, when it will probably start raining a lot. Um, when I left this last time, we'd found our spot and done some landscaping. And marked out our string lines and squares and everything. And over the last few days I've just been digging the holes for the posts. And then every time you uh, dig a hole, you pretty much have to re-square it up again because the hole never lands where you want it to. Um, been using post hole digger. It's a two-man post hole digger, but I've only been using it by myself with a smaller auger. Um, just to initially get the guide hole and then just using the crowbar and stuff to widen them out. And then trusty little bean can to scoop out all the dirt from the bottom you can see this one is pretty much the only one that needs to be fixed up it's not quite square with the hole that screen left edge needs to be widened out a lot but once you've got the sort of bore down it doesn't take a lot of effort to widen out the crowbar so yeah this one's that one's pretty good that knot is just the three meter mark six meter length that's the pretty much dead middle um, this is the other one that needs to be fixed up. You can see it's not quite square, but it won't take long to haul out that edge. And that one will need a little bit. But that's pretty, that's um, dozer fill just there, it's easy to work with. That side over there was harder, lots of compacted clay towards the bottom of the holes. Um, this one looks pretty good. And this one looks pretty good. Yeah, um, the holes are about 70 to 80 centimeters deep. I think that'll be enough. Um, especially with how hard this ground is. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Um, I've got to decide before we go on whether I'm actually going to be concreting them in or just um, treating them with some sort of some kind of moisture resistive technique like um, painting them with old motor oil or something just where they go into the ground and then just tramping them in just the soil back on top it's a lot more labor intensive but it's um it's a bit more DIY and I guess it's it's more carbon efficient than concrete because concrete is a very carbon heavy building material but um yeah, used motor oil isn't the most environmentally friendly thing either, but I think it'll be all right. And I wanted to do something that was low cost as well, just for people who also want to try this, don't want to spend a lot of money with the round hole, uh, round post construction. So yeah, I'll finish um, digging out these holes and then we'll get these posts up. But yeah, we'll keep getting on, keep going with the project.
Okay, we're back again. And um, I've just spent the last few hours um, cleaning out these holes and lining them up again. This one's been widened out. Might have to clean it out a little bit more. Just some leaves and stuff that have blown in there. The smaller poles are going in there, the middle holes. This one's a lot better. Anyway, that's pretty much done, so I'm moving on to the next part of the project, which is preparing the posts to go in. Here I've got the six posts. See the two larger ones, two medium ones, and two smaller ones. It would have been nice to have six big ones, but that's not how trees come. So yeah, what I've decided to do to create a bit of a moisture barrier on the ends of the posts that are going in the ground is to paint them with a bit of used oil. This oil, I've just put it in some of those containers there, um, came out of the dozer that the old man is servicing at the moment, which is good, we have a lot on hand. So yeah, I'm just going to paint the ends that are going in up to about 75 centimetres or whatever. And that should create a moisture barrier between the wood and the earth, which will increase the overall longevity of the structure. Um, I'm, like, yeah, I've never really done this before, but I guess it's just a matter of painting it on and letting it dry out for a little bit and absorb in. Well, let's have a go, see what it's like. put it on nice and liberally so it gets absorbed right in to whatever is going to be exposed to the moisture in the earth. It would be nice if we could just dip it in some sort of barrel. A little too much work. Quite a nice black actually. Some blue black. Dulux color. Right here, um, we'll roll it over now and do the other side. Right here, I think that'll do for now.
It's not really easy just to plant six trees, <laughs> wait for them to grow, and then cut the top off. There's people that do that. So now the fun part starts. It's probably going to take a couple of days to do all the tramping for all of the poles. The slower you go, the slower you refill it, the stronger it's going to be. It's going to be a lot of exercise. We always need that. The next layer of tramping. Like I said, the slower you do it, the better it's going to be. It's labor intensive, that's for sure, but it's um anything that really compares to concrete. And I think it's more carbon efficient, that's for sure. Like I said, concrete's a very carbon heavy building material. Try not to scratch too much of the oil temper off the pole. Might even paint it a bit more. So here we are, just put a little bit more oil on, just to raise the moisture barrier up a bit and just to give another coat. The higher up, the more um, exposed to the elements the wood's going to be. So just been adding a bit more as I've been tramping it down. Got about it, um, tramped down about halfway so far, a bit further than halfway actually. Probably about a third to go, but been going slower and slower the higher I get because of course it compacts everything below but um yeah looking pretty good I reckon um, that'll probably be it for this video I wanted to get another post in today but we've had some trouble with the dozer the old man was working on another project and um, one of the tracks came off which we've been having some product problems with lately so Spend the afternoon fixing that. And then, yeah, we'll get back into it then. So yeah, that'll be it for now. And um, in the next video, I'll, um, I'll probably spend some time putting a few more poles in and see how I go, if there's any major problems or anything. But the next video will probably be back at the sawmill, um, actually getting the sawmill set up. We're gonna put down some formwork and put in some concrete make a nice slab to put that on because um, after these poles are in I'm going to need that sawmill to make some dimensional timber up for the roofing and stuff that's going on there so yeah that's the next stage of the both the projects but yeah it's come along pretty good so far I thought that, that was sort of like a um, proof of concept getting that pole in and it, um, it worked out pretty good see so yeah, you radio guys I'll, um, I'll see you next time have a good one.